getting to see the fate of Daniel for choosing to worship God rather than me, for choosing to exalt the living king rather than exalt an earthly king. And we know what happens. Daniel is going to be thrown into the lion's den because of his righteous living. He knows that is what awaits him. He knows that most likely he is going to die at the mouth of a lion. But Daniel chooses to serve God regardless of the outcome because more important to him is serving God. More important to him is what God desires for him than what he desires for himself. This is where we've been getting things all wrong in our cultural Christianity that we live in. We have the sinful tendency to think that life is all about us, that life is about what is what we think is good for us, what we think will be beneficial to us. And so we focus our time and our attention on what we think is good for us and what we think is best for us instead of asking ourselves the question, what does God want us to do? You see, we're looking at Daniel chapter 6 and we're thinking, well, what good is Daniel to the Lord if he's dead? Well, what good is he to the Lord? He's good to the Lord because he will be with the Lord, which is the ultimate goal of all of our lives is for us to be permanently, forever with the Lord. And so we're coming into Daniel chapter 6. Daniel is going into the lion's den, but Daniel is trusting God to deliver him no matter what happens. He's trusting God to rescue him no matter what happens. You look at this passage and you think, oh, well, Daniel is rescued. His life is spared. The lions don't eat him. But that's not necessarily what Daniel thought was going to happen. Daniel was trusting God to rescue him and God had already rescued him because Daniel was a child of the king. And so no matter what happens to Daniel, whether he dies in the lion's den or whether what did happen, he lives in the lion's den, the lion's den, he is trusting God because God has already rescued him. His life is not about whether he lives or breathes another breath on this earth. His life is about glorifying the Lord. And he, he makes that clear to us in his actions, his righteous actions. He's more concerned about what God calls him to do than what is best for himself in an earthly, earthly manner. He focuses more on God than on himself. We've, we've, got, we've got things so unbelievably wrong. We tend to do just the opposite of what Daniel did. We tend to live our lives thinking, well, what's best for me? What's going to be best for me? What, what, what do I want to do? What, what career do I want to have? What, what school do I want to go to? What, where do I want to live? What, what, all these things, we ask ourselves the question, what do we want? And really the question we should be asking ourselves is, what does God desire for us? Where does he want us to go? What will most reflect his glory where we are? Instead of always asking ourselves the question, well, what do we want to do? Who cares what we want to do? What should matter to us is what God wants us to do. And I have been hit in the face this morning specifically about this because I am on the hills of finishing preparation for this Sunday. And this Sunday, what we're going to talk about is we're going to the book of Ezra and we're going to see that God is always faithful to his promises. But I've been smacked in the face because I'm realizing more and more, which I already do with my mind, but I'm seeing it more and more, that God does not promise me health and wealth. God promised me that if I trust in him, I am his child. God doesn't promise me that on this earthly life that I'm going to have everything that I want, that all my desires are going to be fulfilled. What God promises me is that I am his child if I trust and believe in him. And so I'm coming to a point this morning and I hope that you're going to be here on Sunday because it is smacking me in the head. The word of God is smacking me in the head and saying, why do you perpetuate a cultural idea of who I am and what I'm doing? Instead, you need to stand up for the biblical truth that I am God, that God is God, and there is no other, and that I'm working out my plan in this world, not your plan. And your life is not about your plan. 
your life is about my plan. And so as we look at Daniel, we look at our lives, we're beginning to see that we don't live and breathe based on all what we want to do. We have to live and breathe based on what God wants us to do. And he shows us through his word what he wants to do. He leads us through the Holy Spirit, which never contradicts his word. Our only thing is that we have to make much of God no matter what. Our life's mission is not to do what we want, but to do what God wants us to do. And I have four small children. And I've got to do my best to teach them that their life is not about so much what they want for their lives, but more importantly, what God desires for their lives. So that when they're 36 like me, they will already be wisely choosing what God desires for them rather than what they selfishly want for their lives. Because life is not about them. Life is about doing what God's called us to do. My plea for myself and for you is that we focus on what God calls us to do regardless of ourselves. And that we live for the King knowing that He is the reason that we live and breathe, not ourselves. And what He plans for us is for our good. And I don't mean health and wealth. What I mean is is what he plans for us is for us to be brought to him, which is our good. Don't miss this Sunday. I hope that you have a good Friday, and I hope to see you Sunday.